So in this video, we are going to be making a vertical carousel. It's pretty much the same thing as I did in a previous video where we did the horizontal one, but we are flipping things over. Now over here, you can see here's this carousel. So everything is clickable, just like on the horizontal one. Except now we are flipping it vertically and you can see the background changing to whatever the image is. Now, for everyone who wants to go and download this template right here, there's going to be a link in the description of this video that is going to take you to this page on my website and you can go and download the zip file there. Inside it is the actual template JSON file. Very easy to go and put it in, you open up the library and it's this button over here that says import template and you just put the JSON file there and we'll import everything for you. Now, for everyone else that wants to build this along, there's going to be a link in the description of this video for you that's going to take you to the reference page. And over here is everything we need. It's very similar to the horizontal one. The code is slightly modified so it can take care of the vertical scrolling. So without further ado, let's go and start building this out. So here in Elementor, we're going to need the two containers. One's going to be the scene and one's going to house the code. So we go grab that first container and we are just duplicating it. So we're just going to rename these containers. So the second one is just going to be the code one. So we know what it is later. And this first one is going to be the scene. Our settings are this code one, very easy. Gap zero and padding is zero. So there's gaps padding zero and in here we're just going to put the html widget so get the html widget and that is good to go for that container now the settings of the scene container here we're going to keep it at boxed i think maybe i'll put it at a 1500 the height here is going to be vh and this is 100 then this is going to be horizontal and the gaps are zero style we are going to be putting a gradient overlay so we go look for the gradient and background overlay and then the picture the color on top is black color second color is white the location of the first color let's just change this up to maybe about a 17 percent then if we go down to angle here i'm going to set this to zero and the opacity is going to be 0.95 in the blend mode, we're just going to say multiply. Now, in advanced, we're going to need a CSS class name. So, in that reference page, we take the scene CSS class name, copy that, and we paste it in. Now, inside here, we are going to need two containers. So, we go get a container, and we'll just duplicate it. Now, this first one is going to be the content one again. Put it like that and the second one is the gallery scene now these names don't affect the code at all so you don't have to copy this it's just so that when i come back to this if ever i need to edit this then i know what's going on when i actually built this now for the settings of the content container gonna keep it full width at 100 can be vertical we'll center justify and we are good with that one and in here i'm going to add a heading the text editor, which is that there, put it in, and the button. So, heading, style, I'm going to put it to the right. Typography, we can change if we need to. I'm just going to keep it over here as the same, but I'm going to put the color white. Then the text editor, I'm going to go to the right under style, and I'm putting this to white. Button, same thing, style, right. And I'm just going to customize it a little bit. So topography, keep it maybe at 16 and uppercase. Then the color of this, I'm going to make it transparent. The text color, I'm going to put to white. Border, solid, two pixels, white as well. And the border radius of 50 or 100, whatever you'd like. Um, something that's just nice and rounded. And we are done with this container now let's go to the gallery scene now this one it's going to be full width at 100 it's going to be center justified 
and align items to the center. Now here we're going to need a CSS class name. So under advanced, this is what we're going to be constraining on. So in the reference page, we go get that reboot parent CSS class name because we need the parent for the code to work. Now inside this, we need two containers. So plus sign container, put it in and duplicate. Now this first one, this is going to be for the buttons. And the second container, this is going to be the gallery. So for the settings of the button container, we're just going to change this to a horizontal and we are going to be put a space around. Now, if we go to advanced, the position here, we're going to change it to absolute and then the vertical orientation, we're just going to remove this. So it's center aligned just like that. Now inside this, we're actually going to need two buttons. So if we grab the button widget and we put it into this area, we must just make sure that it's not in the gallery, that it's in the button container. Okay, so now this is going to be the two buttons that's going to be on the either side of this. Now, the spacing over here, if you don't like it, we can change it very easily. It's not a problem. But here for the settings of this button, take out the text. Now, I'm just going to go with the left and right arrows. You can choose whatever you'd like. So I'm going to choose this one over here for, the, for that one. And then the style of this, I'm going to put it as a center justifier. The text color, I'm going to be putting it to white. Um, the sizing of this, I'm actually going to put it as 16. So it's got that size going on. Then background, I'm going to make it transparent. Border is solid at a two pixels and it's going to be white. And the border radius is going to be 100. Then if you go down to padding, we're going to delink this and it's going to be 14 and 15. So 14 top, 15 right, 14 bottom, 15 left. And we've got that sort of round button going on there. Now, if we go to advanced here, what we're going to do is we are going to have to give a custom ID. So in the reference page, this previous button we are going to copy that and we're going to paste it in the ID. Now, if we go down to Z index here, we're just going to set this to five. Now, there, there will be some settings that we might have to change later, but that's only going to be later. So we'll worry about that. Then we'll just do the gallery first and then we'll just finalize these buttons. So now that we have the settings of this, all we're going to do now is duplicate it. And this one, we are just going to change the icon to the opposite direction. And then under advanced, we have to give an ID. So in the reference page, we copy this next button ID and we put it into ID and not CSS classes. And we are good to go there. We are going to fix this up later. So in the gallery, we need to put an image. So we get the image widget, put it in, make sure it's in the gallery and we can choose our images. So I'm going to say select this first one. Now, if you wanted to link to, say, the media file in the light box, or if you want a custom URL, totally up to you, but they will work here. So once we're happy with that, we go over to style. And with we're setting it to pixels, 200, and a height 200 with the object fit of cover. Then if we go down the border radius, I'm just going to set this to 10. Okay. Now we need to duplicate this. So now I'm going to be putting in six images. Six is a good number. You can put less, a little bit more, but um, you're going to have to play with the sizes if you want to have more because um, they will start overlaying it a bit with each other. So I'm just going to go and duplicate this six times. And then now that I have the six images, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change each one's image. So the second one, change the image. Third one, change the image. Fourth one, change the image. Fifth as well. And then the sixth one. Okay. Now that we have all that, let's just go do the settings of this gallery container. So if we click this gallery, let's just change a couple of things here. So this can be full width. It's fine. We're going to need to adjust this later depending. Then the height here, we're going to set 215. Direction is vertical. We're going to center justify this all. And then in advanced, we are going to be putting in our last CSS class name. So here in the reference page, it's just this number, this line number five of auto gallery. Copy that, paste it in. 
Now we can start putting in all the code for this thing to start working. So if we scroll down, this code over here that says the scene container, we're going to copy this. And here in the scene container, under advanced, we got a custom CSS, then we paste that in. So the next one's going to be the gallery scene, advanced, custom CSS, and we need the code. So we scroll down to next for the gallery scene, copy that, paste it in. Then for the gallery container, same thing, advanced, custom CSS. In the reference page, we copy the code that's in here and we paste it. Now, in the reference page, we go one more down and we're going to copy the actual JavaScript. So we take this, we go to the HTML widget and we paste it in. Now you can see that everything is here. So now if we go preview this in the front, this is where the adjustments come in. So you can see that it works over here pretty well. Now, if your page and you, if you have a problem with your page and you can't click these buttons, what's happening is, is the actual container that's housing these images is getting in the way of the buttons. So easy fix is if it's on the gallery, if we go to layout, you can change the width from 100 to a point that you're very happy with. So like say 50% or something. And in advance, you can just make sure that this is center. So if we publish, then your buttons should be clickable depending on how big this frame is because people are doing different frame sizes. And if you want the buttons a bit more far apart, you can change that as well. Then on the buttons container, you can change out the type of spacing that you want. If you want it right to the end, um, it's totally up to you. Okay. So if you want it uh, spaced between, then you can also change the padding here, say on the right and left. So on the right, say maybe like... 20 pixels, left 20 pixels. It's totally up to you and how you want this to actually look over here for your actual design that you'd prefer. Um, but you can see everything working. Then the last thing we just have to do is we must just make sure that this is fine on mobile. So if we go over to mobile, so over here, this mobile looks fine, but I do want to move it up a little bit. So if we go to the gallery container itself under advanced, we delink the margins. And we can just start moving this gallery till you're quite happy with where it is away from everything else. Then these buttons here, we can also play around with these. So the style over here, we can change the typography to something bigger to say, say maybe a 30. And we'll do it to the other button as well. We'll go to style, typography 30. Because what's happening is the code is actually scaling down everything. And then if you want to move these further away, what you can do is in advance, you can change the position here to say absolute and you can put this anywhere you'd want. So if the if this is overlaying a little bit too much, what you can do is just adjust it accordingly until you're very happy with it. And the same thing can be done with the other buttons. So under advanced, we go to position absolute and we can just adjust this accordingly. So until you're very happy with where it is. And that is fine there on mobile. Now, if you want this a little bit bigger or smaller, it's up to you as well. So if you go to gallery and advanced, you come down to this mobile section here and you can change the scale from 6.5 to like a 7.5 and you can just adjust how you'd want it there. Um, it's all very cool and well there. So just remember, if you can't click the buttons, the gallery is where you're going to be. So we just make sure that the gallery is small enough as the actual container so it doesn't interfere with the buttons. And I think that's pretty much everything you really need to go with this. Hope you like this vertical one. This is going to be one of the last ones I'm going to do on the 3D carousel for now. Um, in this type of style. There is other styles I'm going to be showing like this as well. The next video I'm going to be making is going to be the horizontal carousel with the buttons and everything just like this. But it's going to be for products. So see you in the next one. Hope you liked this video. If you did, smash that like button. And if you haven't subscribed, consider subscribing as well. That stuff makes a big difference to a small channel like mine. If you have any suggestions or anything, then just put a comment down below. Let me see what I can do. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.